All right, artist. Um, to finish our fall corn, we're going to make some very colorful corn in here. You could pick all warm colors if you wanted to, which are yellows, oranges, and reds, and pinks. So I have a lot of warm colors in my background already. Or you could use all cool colors. Our cool colors are blues, purples, bluish purples, and also green. So any colors in the cool family, maybe you wanna use all those, or you might want to make this like rainbow colored corn. So that will be a decision you can make. Uh, if you happen to have watercolors, we could paint each of those little circles in with watercolor paints. If you are working from home and you do not have watercolor paints, you could color this in with crayons. You could color the corn in with markers. And I'm gonna show you how we can actually use our markers with a little bit of water to make it look like our corn was painted. I'm gonna get markers out for coloring. So I have my markers, and then the other thing I would need would be a little cup with clear water. So if you're at home, you need to make sure this is okay with a grown-up that is hanging out with you. And um, the other thing that you can use, if you have a paintbrush, you could just use a paintbrush and a water cup. If you don't have a paintbrush, um, you can use Q-tips. If you happen to have um, Q-tips, you can even use a sponge that has a little strip cut off to dip in the water and to make our markers kind of look like paint. So, to fill in, I'm jumping around with where I would put the colors. I'm not gonna color my whole piece of corn in in real time, because that would take all the time I was planning on you having for art today. Um, so I'm just gonna do a section you would also be doing your whole, your whole thing. Got that, I'm gonna switch. Oops, still my leaves from when I did the background here. So now I'm gonna get So if you are going to do the add water method, which I'm about to do, you want to think about what colors might accidentally make brown if you put them together. So if I use red, orange, and yellow only, those colors are all right next to each other on the color wheel. They happen to all be warm colors. They're also known as analogous colors. So they're colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And if water accidentally gets from one piece to the next, it's not going to mess anything up. If I have both warm and cool colors, so my yellow, orange, and red, my warm colors, plus cool colors of blues, purples, and greens, there's a chance when I start to add water that that could get a bit muddy. So if you can be super careful to make sure you only get your water in that exact circle, you could use all the colors and still have a nice, neat piece of artwork. But that's pretty hard to do. So I'm going to suggest that you do one or the other. So all warm colors like I did in mine, or all cool colors. But that way, if they start to run into each other, it'll actually still look very beautiful. And it'll either have that warm or cool feeling without getting muddy. So I'm gonna dip my Mine's a Q-tip right now into the, whoops, I got too much water, into the water. And then I'm just gonna go in here. I'm gonna do all my reds first. And so because these are washable paints, that means they're water soluble. So when I add water, they actually kind of melt almost into a water color paint look. So if you don't have paint at home but you have washable markers, I think I got all my reds so now I'm going to my oranges. I could have started with yellow but I'm trying to hit all those colors at the same time. 
so that, and every once in a while you'll need to dip and get a little more water so that I don't um, blend the colors too much, especially like if I had purples and blues and greens in here, I would want to do all one color first, then maybe switch to a different Q-tip. And so this is starting to look nice and painted in. I wonder if I... So either way looks fine. You could just leave it colored with your markers. Or if you have Q-tips or a paintbrush. Now you could paint these, as I mentioned, if you happen to have paint. But I know most people... A lot of people anyway don't have paint at home so if you don't have paint at home obviously you wouldn't paint them but if you have paint at home and it's okay with your family then you could paint the corn I did mine with markers and added a little bit of water and it's really starting to look like a painting so I will keep going till the whole thing's filled in and I could fill in the back with crayon if I wanted to, or I could even combine my crayon and marker. So I'll do that part now. I don't want to run my hand over that wet water. So I flipped, flipped mine upside down. I'm going to use one of my crayons to make some directional lines going from the corn away from it. And that kind of looks like the lines that might be in the husk. Then I'm trying something for the first time with you, so it might not work out. Sometimes that happens, but I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if I add marker with that crayon and then the water, if it'll look like a crayon and watercolor painting. So I'm filling in some of these empty spots with my marker. You could just fill a whole thing in with marker. Just trying to give you some additional options for if you're making art at home for a way to have it look like maybe you also did some painting and it is painting it's just painting with water instead of colors I'm gonna, my q-tip is a little bit dirty so I happen to have another one that I can use for this part and I'm gonna rub it in there I think that looks really nice to finish up my corn husks. All right, so I keep going with the corn, and then I would have my finished artwork. All right, this picture is pretty much finished. When I was looking at the leaf I had left, it looked strange to me because it's a big white space that sticks out. So I'm gonna, same as I did with the husk, just kind of doing some quick coloring, right? Not my best coloring, some quick coloring in between these crayon marks. We just have these super fine markers and I could even mix a little yellow in there Whoop. and finish it up with some water if I didn't have water I would do neater coloring so you could leave it white or you could do or a, you could color it in a different color They wouldn't want to do that scribbling coloring if I wasn't going to finish it with water, which will kind of blend it all together, and then I'll be finished. So I hope you enjoyed making some fall-themed art with me. We were making fall-themed art in the building, too. So finding our inspiration from the seasons 
the weather. There we are, our environment. 